Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Stone Cold Steve Austin impersonator Phil McDonald here to tell you to go support Going In Raw and Friendo Club at patreon.com forward slash Stephen Larson. They got bonus episodes, ad-free audio, a weekly newsletter rounding up the week in wrestling news, and a bunch more. Patreon.com forward slash Stephen Larson. Go support or get hit with a stutter. Hey, friendo, Steve here. And Larson. And welcome back to Going In Raw, the only pro wrestling podcast you need to be listening to right here at YouTube.com forward slash Stephen Larson. Available wherever podcasts can be found. Of course, tape live at the Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash Stephen Larson. We've got some exciting stuff coming up this week on Wednesday. Yes, when, Wednesday. Yes, Correct. Wednesday. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, we're going to be doing uh, two special things. Number one, we're dropping uh, uh, a King of the Ring 1996 episode of going mm-hmm. in a retro pay-per-view review. You know what? Mm-hmm. I just realized we didn't do the ads for that. We need to do that. Yeah, we'll do it. We're done with this. Okay. Uh, I, know, I know. And then uh, number two, live on Wednesday on the Twitch, we're going to be mm-hmm. doing our WWE 2K22 Friendo Draft. That's right. All the great creations out there, you still have time between now and Wednesday to create your wrestler that you want to see be featured in our 2K22 series. First, we're going to do mine since I have the game. And then we're going to draft all the characters first. Mm -hmm. Not all of them, the ones we like. And then uh, uh, Larson's going to do his series after my series is done. And then uh, then, uh, we're going to do go back to some We Book Raw after that. So uh, that should be fun. Uh, I think we're going to be putting all those up at Friendo Club TV, the U- secondary right. U channel, YouTube channel we have, U channel, YouTube channel we have. Uh, it sounds like a, like a YouTube mm. offshoot. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a say, to say the least. Um, so anyways, we're doing that. That should be a lot of fun. King of the Ring 96 review recorded earlier today. That was a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, get to hear me do my, uh, my Stone Cold King oh, of the Ring 1996. Too. Uh, uh, promo the Austin three sixteen thing, so uh, so yeah, that'll be fun. Uh, and then uh, this are there any paper? I know there's. I know we're not doing anything in terms of the pay per view stuff this weekend, but on the sixteenth we're going to uh, Action Coast Wrestling. Yeah, uh, this coming that's Saturday, right? The that's 16th, Saturday, Saturday, yeah, Saturday evening, yeah. Uh, so if anybody's in the Northern California area, if you guys are in Sacramento, go check out Action Coast Wrestling. You mm-hmm. can find it probably on Eventbrite. I know they yes. have a Twitter account. Uh, and uh, we're gonna be there, uh, having a good old time watching some oh, wrestling. Yes. Oh yeah, watching the grapples at our local indie promotion. Uh, so that should be fun. Uh, when is what? So we had there was uh for the big red stuff, New Japan's Hyper Battle, which the Enforcer yeah. once again slept his way to a clean to sweep. A, yeah, ran the table. On He's that. back in table. it, man. He is. So I believe it's ninety three. 94 for you and 86 for the Enforcer. 94? I think I have 91. I have 94? Sorry, yes, you have 91. I have 93, you have 91. Yeah, 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 I'm down by two on you now. Yeah, sorry. Um, so, uh, so yeah, that's cool. And then when is uh, the next event that we're going to be doing predictions on? Impact Rebellion. Impact Rebellion a week from Saturday. Okay, okay. So maybe we'll, maybe we'll do like No, you live... have 90, I have 93, you have 86. I have what? 90. 90. Okay, I'm down by three. That sounds right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then he's at 86, not too far behind with Rebellion. Nope. And uh, and then, of course, Triple Mania. Triple Mania after that. It's anybody's game. Still. It's anybody's game. So uh, that's pretty exciting. Uh, maybe we can get together uh, a week from Saturday and do a, a live watch sure. along for Rebellion. Sure. That should be a lot of fun. That would be fun. Well. That would be a lot of fun. Uh, I think Rebellion has the potential to be a make or break situation. Somebody can well, go up huge, or somebody can go down huge. That's entirely possible. But then you got you got Triple Mania the following weekend, that and you can easily make up ground there. Woo. Oh easily. boy! Oh easily. boy! I think Very it's going exciting. to come down to the last show. I don't think anybody's going to be able to run run away with it until until Triple Mania on the thirtieth. I hope so. I re- I honestly want Rebellion to be sort of the the field evener. Like you know, they did. Yeah, they, yeah. They, they we, get an even we go into field. Triple Mania neck and neck. Yeah, yeah that's what I like. Yeah, drama. Uh, that's what I want to see. Drama, exactly. Exactly. Uh, speaking of speaking uh, of drama, yeah, drama, drama. Uh, like you know, there's, there's some wrestling podcasts out there that tell some good stories about the drama, the storytelling of pro wrestling. Um, 
And uh, we may be getting some more competition in that particular area. Wrestling podcast, Russell Votes, reporting that The Undertaker. The Undertaker. The Undertaker might be getting to the podcast business, what Russell Votes had to say. Quote, it shows similar to that of Broken Skull Sessions. Peacock and WB have convinced The Undertaker to enter the podcasting world. Source states this new show will begin airing within the next few months. A fascinating concept that was unfathomable. Unfathomable. Just a few years back. That is correct. That's my least favorite word. Unfathomable. 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 Uh, Yeah. So, look, here's the thing. Austin spent years. It'll be interesting to see what the setup is here. Because Austin spent years on his own podcast before he did the Broken Skull Sessions. He is a master class an interview. He's a tremendous interviewer. Uh, Chris Jericho is a very good interviewer as very well. Very good interviewer. I don't. I kind of feel like Undertaker have interviewing guests. If that's the format, is kind of not what people really want from the Undertaker. They want him. I would to be imagine the guest. exactly. You have a host. If they want to keep it in house, have Corey Graves do it. Yeah. Uh, have Corey Graves host the show, and then interview the Undertaker about any number of subjects, mm-hmm. matches, shows. Phases of his career, mm-hmm. favorite opponents. Yeah, the list goes on and on. That I think that's what people really want to hear. They yeah. don't want to have Undertaker have on some guest and he's doing the interview. I'm just guessing. Well, at this I, juncture, I think they want to hear the Undertaker tell his own story. Yeah, I think a, I think a mix of the two would be great. You know, it's like yeah, I do think that he might need like a like a, a, a he might need a Conrad. You know. But yeah. that being said, because, you know, obviously he's got tons of stories that we haven't heard before. The dynamic between him and Mick Foley, the dynamic between him and, uh, uh, you know, I mean, we've seen it with Austin. It's great to watch them together. So some sort of format where you can be kind of fluid, where he can have a conversation or somebody can moderate a conversation between him or facilitate a conversation between him and some classic opponents, Undertaker and Sid, you know. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, I... I, I having Undertaker interview Damian Priest. Mm -hmm. There could be interesting stuff there. I'm just guessing when people think Undertaker podcast, that's probably not first and foremost what they're thinking. They want to hear what Undertaker has to say. Has Damian Priest been on the Broken Skull Sessions? No. Yeah, but I get you. Like, even like the top star, like, I mean, if somebody has history with like Randy Orton, that'd be cool. Like Becky Lynch, I don't know. I don't know how much you'd get out of that. Like but with Austin, because he is a really good interview. He's a fantastic interview. There's a fantastic. difference. Yeah, there's totally a difference between the two. So, um, so yeah, I think you do a lot of fun stuff with dead man talking. Yeah. Kane, tell me about that time. You couldn't get it up and you had to turn to Blue Chew, our sponsor today. Kane, talk to me about limp dick. <laughs> the, your dead man couldn't rise. <laughs> <laughs> that tombstone was delicious just like the meals you can get from what's that imagine, thing called uh, blue apron is that what it's called uh imagine uh, if if they got a uh, pat mcafee to host the show oh that'd be amazing that'd be uh, <laughs> you know, that'd be amazing hey okay sid tell us the time you pooped your pants and undertaker what did you think when he pooped his exactly. pants that'd be amazing. at wrestlemania and he gets up on his chair <laughs> That would be amazing. Poop in his pants. Exactly. (laughs) Exactly. That'd be so great. Uh, He's got all he's got all of his crew there. What? What? Oh man. Yeah, just honestly, just the Pat McAfee show with Undertaker and Guest would be amazing. That'd be great. If they just put Undertaker with his buddies or like up on the screen like AJ Hawk. Yeah. Smoking (laughs) a cigar. Yeah, exactly. Uh, This is some interesting news here next. Uh, uh, you know, it, it'd be interested to see where this leads. So this is from FIFA Select. By the way, go subscribe to FIFA Select. They're amazing. So the report over the weekend that New Japan Pro Wrestling has begun the process of getting work visas for talent to come to Japan. Ooh, come Tuesday. So, you know, uh, obviously there's been a, a variety of travel restrictions in place um, uh, since the beginning of pandemic. And maybe now, again, this is purely speculative, We've seen a number of talents say they want to work in Japan, Mm -hmm. in AEW, elsewhere. Mm -hmm. Could this finally open the door to making that happen? Could we see Brian Danielson taking on Zack Sabre Jr.? 
Ooh, that's like match of the hey, year. New Japan Pro Wrestling. Any year, that's match of the year. Um, well, you know, we didn't like Eddie Kingston on site attack Daniel Garcia on Strong or one of those shows mm-hmm. like just this mm-hmm. weekend. Mm-hmm. Uh, it seems like, I mean, if that's to be believed, if the, sort of what we've seen a little bit of already, um, it seems like the two companies are, are totally itch, itching to work uh, with they, each they other. Just announced, they just announced that uh, AEW is airing on uh, New Japan World. Yeah, Dynamite and Rampage. But apparently think, Shingo, right? Shingo Takagi did a commentary. I know. I read some of his commentary. It sounded amazing. amazing. Talking about Adam Cole. He was like, surely if I was to step in the ring, they would yell. And somebody would say Shingo Takagi. They would all say baby. Yeah, it's so good. <laughs> yeah, it, was, oh, it, was, it man. sounded pretty awesome. Pretty yeah. awesome. Yeah, no, that, that's that's terrific stuff. Um, yeah, obviously, Daniel, uh, Brian Danielson versus uh, Zack Sabre Jr. That's top. I mean, you know, we've speculated on how great would it be if there was an AEW arm of the G1. Mm-hmm. Uh, that would be tops. One thing that I don't want to see happen necessarily is um, I think this would be I think this would be spectacular if maybe if they sort of devoted their own super shows to something like this, as opposed to too much integration within the at least within the weekly AEW show, because they are they have a massive roster already. They do. So if like you're starting to introduce. Some of the top names. Let's just throw four of them out there. Okada, Naito, Zack Sabre Jr., and like a Will Ospreay or something. I don't like it's just you're going to be taking TV time away from other people. You know, maybe one at a time or just like do a super show. Do like an annual super show or twice year super show or something like that and use TV to build it a little bit. Um, But uh, but yeah, I think that if if done properly, if done uh, correctly, Mm -hmm. um, I think this could be a win win for everybody. Uh, a lot of great stories with all the history, with all the participants. Obviously, a lot of people in AEW spent some time in New Japan, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so, yeah, man, this could be a, this could be an absolute blast. Besides Brian Danielson versus Zack Sabre Jr. Larson, name some other dream matches you'd want to see. Who, who, I mean, who, of who course, you want to see Kenny Omega versus Kota Ibushi at Tokyo, though. Absolutely. That's, yeah, that's the thing. Okada. Who do you want to see with Okada? Rainmaker. Oh, Punk. Oh, man, that's good. That's uh, good. Yeah. yeah. That's good. I like that a lot. Naito. Give me somebody for Naito. MJF. Yes, that'd be good. Ooh. That'd be good. That's good stuff. Yeah, there's there's a lot going on there. Oh, Ticking absolutely. Time Bong versus Darby Allen. Fantastic. Ooh, Darby Allen in the, in the best of the Super Juniors. Fantastic. Ooh. Ooh. A lot of great possibilities there, man. You got that right. Let's take a quick break here. Get a word from our sponsor, Lumen. Hey, Steve. Mm, yeah. Let's talk skincare. Okay. So I'm sure a lot of the friendos out there are once like me. Your skincare routine probably consisted of washing your face with the same body wash or soap you use on the rest of your body and thinking, hey, you know what? This is probably good enough. Mm-hmm. Well, I've got some bad news. Mm. That body wash or soap you're using all these years? Is damaging your skin. That's right, man. But with Lumen, you can drop that bottle of three in one and start using products that actually take care of your skin. Lumen's products aim to help those with stubborn acne scars, under eye dark circles, wrinkles, sun damage, dry skin, and oily skin. And getting started is easy. All you got to do is take the two minute quiz on their website and they'll tell you which skincare routine is best suited for your needs. Yeah, I took the quiz and got the anti fatigue essential set. To help with these dark circles I keep getting under my eyes. And with Lumen, I know I'm getting high quality products made with natural ingredients like licorice root extract, rose flower oil, charcoal powder, ginger, and green tea. So level up your skincare game with Lumen Skin today. Go to lumenskin.com slash raw to get your free trial of Lumen's products. That's L-U-M-I-N skin dot com slash raw to get your free trial of Lumen's products. Lumenskin dot com slash raw. And let's get a word from our sponsor, Blender's Eyewear. Fresh from the sandy beaches of San Diego, California, comes the only sunglass brand I'm ever going to wear again, Steve. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about Blender's Eyewear. And you're going to be just as hooked when you witness how awesome they are. I got myself a pair of ice crush shades check Ooh, these out Ooh. look at that and they're my go-to sunglasses to wear when i'm out on my morning walks or running errands well 
you got the ice crush. I got stone breaker. Yeah. Whoa. He said, uh, blenders teams of in-house designers are always coming up with new styles too, like orange polarized wraparounds, tortoise shell frames with purple lenses to classic gold arms on black lenses. And unlike expensive big brand shades, blenders are actually affordable and still offer the same cool factor. Look at us as the <laughs> other leading styles. And they've got more than sunglasses. Blenders offers prescription glasses, readers, and blue lights, as well as a snow collection with goggles and accessories. So live life in forward motion with Blenders today. Because we're so cool. To score 15% off your Blenders purchase, visit BlendersEyewear.com and enter promo code RAWVIP. That's BlendersEyewear.com, code RAWVIP for 15% off. Blenders, rocked with pride worldwide. And before we get back to the show, let's get a word in from our sponsor, Get Upside. Larson. Uh-huh. Have you noticed that basically everything is getting more expensive these days? Oh, yeah. From gas to groceries to dining out. Inflation is really hitting us in the wallet, man. Yeah, yeah, I have noticed that, Steve, which is why I started using Get Upside. I've used their app when buying gas, eating out, and I'm getting cash back with every purchase. Just last week, I put some gas in my car and bought a burrito using Get Upside. And now I've got a few extra dollars just waiting to be spent on more burritos. Oh, I love those gas station burritos, man. They are delicious. So are the offers you can get through GetUpside. All you got to do to get started is download the GetUpside app in the App Store or Google Play, open it up, and claim an offer for whatever you're buying. Then check in and pay as you normally would with a credit or debit card and get paid. You can cash out anytime to your bank account, PayPal, or an e-gift card for Amazon or a bunch of other brands. So download the free Get Upside app and use promo code RAW to get $5 or more cash back on your first purchase of $10 or more. That's $5 or more cash back on your first purchase of $10 or more using promo code RAW. Speaking of great possibilities, uh, we got a confirmation here that an NXT superstar is officially, officially now part of the main roster. Great possibilities, I'm telling you, Steve. Mm -hmm. So while he has been appearing occasionally on main roster television the last few weeks, it seems that after his loss, Tony D'Angelo at NXT stand deliver, Tommaso Ciampa is moving up to Raw full-time. PW Insider reported today that Tommaso Ciampa has been called up officially Monday Night Raw roster. And then, of course, just a week ago, Fightful Select reported that pitches were made for both Tommaso Ciampa and Rhea Ripley to join Edge's new stable. Which would at least put Ciampa in something uh, meaty mm -hmm. right out of the gate. Mm -hmm. You know, he's going to get a new name probably. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So he, if you want to motivate this kind of properly, did I say time bong? People are saying that I in the chat said oh, I said ticking I time bong. I didn't know. There's a new name for you for uh, uh, time There we go. Um, anyways, look, if you put him in Edge's stable, he can't be the kind of guy that AJ Styles runs out and throws over the barricade, like with Damian Priest. He's got to be like you know their X factor, a guy who a like wild card gets a lot of shit done. And I guess if you're joining kind of a cult, cults have been known to rename people. Uh, yeah. So you know, I guess that I guess would it'd be, it'd be kind of odd if they renamed Champa but not Damian Priest. I Using know. that logic, no, no, I know, I t I get it, I I know, I understand. They'd have to find some reason, which they probably won't. You know him by a different name. Is that going to be the new thing? You know him. You might have Maybe. known him by a different name. Maybe. I don't. Yeah, I don't know, man. I don't know. It doesn't look good. Like recent developments do not portend good things for Tommaso Ciampa's name in WWE. No. Uh, no. But hopefully they find something that sort of, I don't know, fits. And, you know, they seamlessly, you know, you, you say, oh, look, it's Tommaso Ciampa. You don't just not name him anything. He's already been on main roster programming. <laughs> he has no name. Yeah. <laughs> that actually might be kind of cool. The man with the, oh, who is that? He's been stripped of name. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah man. I don't know. Hey, look, that's great for him because hopefully it means a pay raise and hopefully they'll do some cool stuff with him. Uh, but yeah, he's totally getting a name change. And I hope that he's not an edge of stable to take losses. I know. I know. Yeah. Edge's stable, like if you're gonna have a stable, you gotta have like some winners. Exactly. Otherwise, you won't take the stable seriously. Right. Exactly. So you can't have a whole squad seriously. of Virgils, man. Uh, let's talk about some more NXT news here. So, following announcement last week, the NXT had vacated the tag titles following the release of Nash Carter. 
Uh, the promotion announced today that five teams will compete in a gauntlet match this Tuesday. To crown new tag team champions, the five teams are Grayson Waller, mm -hmm. Usanga, mm -hmm. Legato Del Fantasma, mm -hmm. Creed Brothers, mm -hmm. Briggs and Jensen, mm -hmm. and Pretty Deadly. Mm -hmm. Who's your early pick for this, Larson? Because I have mine. It might be Waller and Sonka. Really interesting. Maybe. Because I could see Tony D'Angelo maybe getting involved, costing Legato their match. I feel like the Creeds and Pretty Deadly kind of cancel each other out, and then it's just kind of up to to Waller and Songa and Briggs and Jensen. So I'd say either of those two teams. My guess would be Briggs and Jensen. They was on a face tag team. They'll take the face tag team and they'll put another face tag team on those titles. You can pick up with whatever they were going to do with Waller and Sanga with Briggs and Jensen. But you're right. Otherwise, yeah, Legato, they're not going to win. And then the Creed brothers and Pretty Deadly are going to sort of take themselves out of the equation. Mm -hmm. I like mm -hmm. this gauntlet match situation. I think that's oh, gauntlet matches cool. are always great. Hopefully we the first hour of NXT matches. will be uh, the gauntlet match. Yeah, that could be a lot of fun. That could be really good stuff. Right there. Really good wrestling. It could be a lot of fun. Yeah. You know who seems like he's a lot of fun? Oh, gosh. Formerly known as Braun Strowman, a.k.a. Adam Scher. Titan, whoever, whatever he goes by, looking pretty spiffy at Alexa Bliss's wedding with pink. Who's, whose shirt. wedding fit did you uh, prefer, Mox's or, or Braun's? Which would I wear would be Mox's. That just seems like something I would actually wear. I got to give, you know what, man? I, I, I'm a big fan of Mox. He seems like a good person. Uh, I, I do have to give, so all due respect to him. The showing out of Braun Strowman with that electric pink. And he had on like pink Crocs and a mm -hmm. pink and a belt. Pink belt. Yeah. I, I appreciate that. And then uh, uh, Raquel Rodriguez was was matching. Like a matching dress or something. Yeah. I appreciate that, man. I'm down with it. I'll be honest with you. Whatever, you know, your 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 thoughts on wrestling aside, or what kind of person you are, if you're gonna if you're gonna show up like that. I mean, Mox just sort of got out of bed, he put on what he usually puts on, I think probably as a gag. And yeah. then and then he showed up, which I appreciate. Uh, and I would I would wear that before I put on like a skin tight pink shirt because nobody wants to see that. Uh, yeah, I'm going to go with Braun on that one, man, on the wedding right. fit. What about you? I'd probably lean more towards Braun if he just didn't have jeans on. Oh, he said blue jeans on, I think. Were they blue jeans or were they black? Nice jeans. I thought they were blue. Like I Took a glimpse real quick. Um, they're like, dude, they are. Uh, I'm not sure if they'll. They're 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 definitely uh, a color. <laughs> they're like it's like a light black, maybe borderline a shade of purple, but that just might be the pink seeping into the light. Yeah, 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 yeah. They're not blue though. No, oh, all right, all right. They look, they look like they're... I don't even think they're jeans, to be honest with you. Oh, all right. I just, I just saw it real quick. Like, But maybe. I don't know if that's denim or not. I think it's... Well, maybe that is denim. Yeah, that's probably denim. Yeah, it looked like it could be denim. That's why. I, yeah. Here, let me pull that up. Let me see if I can Yeah, pull it. it up real quick. There we go. Yeah, I think it, look, I think it, look, it looks like a million bucks there. Uh, there we go. Those could be... Yeah, okay. No, it those are be, slacks. Yeah, they got, they yeah, got, right? they got like a, a, a plaid print on. So, okay, I take that back. He does yeah. have some dress pants. All right. Disregard that. Then. And he's got like the Bret Hart sunglasses, kind of. Yeah, he's got some kind of wraparounds going there. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm down with that right there, man. He looks like he's a guy who has fun. I look at him I'm like, oh, he looks like he has fun. Then check his social media. And you're like, it's kind of the opposite of that. Although he do, I, I had no idea until I was doing the, the amount, the small amount of research I did on this quote unquote story about him shooting hard on Tony Khan uh, that he had to control your nutrition uh, meat seasoning. He's all in on that brand. I kind of appreciate he's all in on it. Well, man. hold on. Hold on. Hold that. on. Control your nutrition meat seasoning. That's what it looked like. Well, seasoning unto itself offers very little to, to no nutrition. I'm not going to tell him that. I mean, you need salt, obviously, but you get salt <laughs> from a variety of sources. You can go to Wendy's. They have an entire burger just made of salt. Virtually. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I don't know. I mean, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know what else you're gonna. Say. Maybe, maybe there's something in the seasoning. Maybe the seasoning 
has oh, some uh, turmeric in it, which is supposed to be good for memory. It is good for you, yeah. Yeah. I mean, there are a lot of seasonings that are good for you, but. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what I'm thinking. Uh, so, anyways, he was shooting hard on Tony Khan and then the bot situation. Uh, so, this is what he said apparently on, I, on Instagram. He says, Why is there no face to palm emoji? I think there is. Uh, yeah, he there, says, I think so. He says, This is the same guy that pays the dirt sheets. And says his wrestlers are free to do whatever, but blackballed them from control your narrative shows. Why? Because we're a fucking threat, is what he put. That's quoting. That's quoting him on Instagram. This is according to Cultaholic. I'm assuming they got this right because I got this from a Cultaholic uh, article. Um, so yeah, look, I can I can understand I can understand that shot being fired if that's true. If Tony Khan said, "Hey, none of y'all can go to this control your nutrition show." Okay, control your nutrition, not on the docket for any of my wrestlers. Uh, I can understand why he'd be upset about that. Plus, the Tony Khan bot situation is kind of funny. He continues on Twitter. An independent study has confirmed that much of the staunch anti-control your nutrition online community aren't real individuals as a staff running thousands of accounts, an army of bots to signal boost them. Look closely. These aren't real people. Who'd pay for such a wildly expensive thing? Hashtag what a mark. He says blacklisted. That's why so many people want to work with us. And both our shows have had tons of AEW talent backstage watching. We are the new option. You've been warned. We've been warned, Larson. You know, what? that's good. Stick up for your company. He's all in on his shit, man. I guess so. He's, you know, hey, if it's if, if it's his endeavor and he's he's passionate about it, I guess. Yeah, you, you'd expect him to stick up for it. Mm -hmm, absolutely. Yeah. Like, I'm not into it. I'm not into control nope. your nutrition. Mm -mm. The brand. I'm into controlling my own nutrition. Yeah. Do not, my own not research. The brand as, as, as pitched here by Braun Strowman. Not at all. Not into that. <laughs> I'll control right. my own nutrition. <laughs> Myself. I do my own research, man. I, I'll do my own spice blend. Thank you very much. Yeah. Jorge and Chad here has a right. So Brian Cage was backstage, huh? <laughs> 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 oh man yeah i don't know it's 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 fun it's fun to talk shit about this kind of stuff because it's all silliness it's all silly drama that it you know it's fun to watch it's fun to watch this stuff go down and then you see this terrific fit of his at the, at the wedding it is he's, something else he's still a character he's been able to maintain to, to remain a character outside of any major promotion mm -hmm. you know and I still, I still maintain he's going to end up back in WWE. But I don't know if control your narrative. If he looks at it and he's like, man, yeah, this is really working for me. He looks at it and says, this is the future professional wrestling. Could be. You know. So My, uh, If it's that and if they can make some money. Well, that's, the, really that's possible. the thing. Yeah, if he can make some yeah. money. That I, don't know what kind of, uh, I don't know what kind of gate they're getting. But, I mean, uh, the venues they ran, at least the venue they ran in Dallas was not large. Yeah, right. Yeah. Well, they had one person pay for the rant room, which is a hundred bucks. Mm. So that'll pay. I don't know. Somebody. Something. Yeah, that'll pay. That'll pay a hundred bucks out of somebody's pocket. Uh, anyways, we have a raw tonight. Larson. Cody Rhodes is set for his first match on raw in six years. And you know, his first spectacular opponent's going to be. I have it right here in front of me. So yes, I do know the Miz, the Miz, the Miz. Miz. I am glad that this doesn't look. I would think that, like, the person I would want his first feud to be against would be the Miz. So I'm glad this is just going to be just a match. Let's get this match out of the way. Exactly. And exactly. Uh, maybe Hopefully not first real feud, just match. I hope maybe something in this match will set up a feud. First real feud. Yeah. With indeed. him and somebody that isn't the Miz. Uh, AJ Styles to battle Damian Priest. Maybe this is where uh, uh, Tommaso Ciampa makes an appearance the man with no name yeah. you knew him by another name and now you don't now he has none now he's got zero name uh and then uh amas and mvp address their attack from the vip lounge i am actually really looking forward to the chemistry between amas and mvp yeah i'm curious to see amas i get the feeling that i'm uh, i don't know man i know i'm in i'm in like you know not a lot of people i think feel this way but i always dig when amas gets on the mic he always kind of makes me chuckle. He seems like he's really into what he's doing. He seems like he's having yeah. fun with what he's doing. Well, he seems like he understands his character. Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally. Which yeah. goes a long way. Yeah. No, I don't know. I like Amos. I've liked him ever since uh, he was uh, Shane's buddy. 
Yeah. He just has like a, a vibe about him that I'm like, oh, I like this guy. He's cool. Yeah. No, I get you. I get yeah. you. I get you. Anyways, you know who else are, are, is cool? It's the friendos, man. Friendos. Let's go Super ahead and answer cool. some friendo questions. We have a thread here on our Twitter. Every Monday, we got our Twitter thread uh, here for the Monday show. First up, Juan Guerrero Jr., Mr. Mr. Triple Mania, Senor Triple Mania himself. Says Cody says he came to WWE to become world champion. So then do you think he might have stayed in AEW if he didn't lock himself out of the AEW world title picture? I mean, the story told about his dad is very specific in that it's the WWF title. Now, of course, WWE title. Um, and as much as as, as, as as popular as AEW has gotten, uh, in terms of the, the impression, the notoriety in professional wrestling circles, they still got a long way to go to compete with the legacy and prestige of WWE. Mm -hmm. um, and I, so I think if the idea is that picture of his dad and that story his dad told him is what actually really motivated him to be a professional wrestler, mm -hmm. then winning a WWE World Championship is going to mean more to him than winning an AEW World Championship. Mm -hmm. If that, so. yeah, absolutely. If that, if that is the actual reason, um, I, I think that, you know, on the other side of things, sort of behind the scenes stuff, I, I think he, from the interviews that he's given, it seems like he might have found a little too much conflict between being EVP and on talent personality. As we saw early on in AEW, the EVPs were fairly reluctant to book themselves strong. They wanted to feature other acts. And mm -hmm. Tony Khan realized, no, people are here because of you. We need to push you guys. And so mm -hmm. Kenny had that huge run. The Young Bucks have had mm -hmm. their run. Um, and I think maybe part of that early on with Cody was, I'm going to be manager, so I'm going to take myself out of this formally on camera. And, uh, and, and I just wonder if, even if he hadn't done that, the conflict between being manager and on screen, it seemed, it seems like it might've affected him the most with his ambitions versus what he ended up doing as, as, as he put it, a manager. Um, so no, I, I think that, I think that he just wasn't fit for that role. And I believe if he goes back in a couple of years, which I think is a distinct possibility, because I think he understands that going company to company, it keeps you relevant. It does. If he goes back, and his return to AEW will be huge. Mm -hmm. If he goes back, he's not going to be an EVP. He's going to yeah. be talent, and so he'll be a bit more free up to to per, to pursue that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. Uh, B man Patrick Sparks says we you've signed up for a pool tournament, but need a partner. What wrestler from the major promotions do you think would be the best and help you hustle for the win? Who's the Paul Newman of the wrestling world? I don't know if we've seen anybody play pool. Yeah, I don't know either. I mean, I feel like AJ Styles might give off that old school Paul Newman vibe a little bit. You know, I could see him in a pool hall, one of those like sweaty pool halls down south, you know. Yeah. Uh, smoky around a table. I mean, I'll go with I'll go with AJ Styles. Um, I have no idea if that guy knows how to play pool or not. Yeah, I have no idea. Or who do you think is good no at who, in kayfabe? Who's good at the hustle? I'm gonna I'm about good at the hustle per se, but if I'm doing anything competitive, I feel like I'd be my my odds would be drastically uh, to win be drastically improved if I had Samoa Joe by my side. Oh, great answer! That's a terrific answer. Yeah, he seems like he seems like a real hustler. Uh, let's see here, uh, Nikhil says uh, almost everyone in the world has some sort of social media these days. This is a good question. He says, with that in mind, what are some of the reasons shoot or kayfabe WWE wouldn't bring back Cyber Sunday? Is it terribly fondly remembered, the whole idea of Cyber Sunday? I don't think it's it's like poorly remembered. I, I think it's a, I think it's a really cool idea to be honest with you. It is, but at the same time, if they want something very specific and then leave the vote up to fans and don't get the result they want, they might have issue with that. 
it's harder to control stuff. That's a good point. That 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 could be why. Yeah, that could be why. Uh, Weight Breaker here in chat says, love the new camera. We didn't address this on the show for people watching on YouTube. He says, love the new camera and setup, Larson. You're being interviewed for a Netflix documentary. What is the documentary about, Larson? Uh, visiting the in-laws. <laughs> <laughs> they did a whole documentary on that. Is it yeah. like a movie or is it like a multi-part series? No, this is like a three-minute short. <laughs> Uh, let's see here. I'm just trying to do something. It says you're a hot new debuting wrestler in AEW or WWE. Who are the worst people to feud with that would slow down your momentum? In AEW, be QT Marshall Correct. and the Factory. Correct. In WWE, historically, mm-hmm. it's been Dolph Ziggler or the Miz. The Miz. Yeah. Yeah. Exact. Exactly the right answers. Uh, let's uh, see. Here. Blake Elizondo, is there anyone that can believably challenge Roman right now? Should he have? Should he even defend the title until a realistic contender comes along? Just like do promos for a, a few uh, until they get a momentum behind somebody. What can be done to power him down? I well, first of all, I believe they have no intention nor any interest in powering him down in any by any stretch of the imagination. No, they're going to continue to power him up. Exactly. I can think of multiple legit opponents. Randy Orton be terrific. Bobby Lashley in his new sort of form would be good. Drew McIntyre. Drew McIntyre is number one on my list. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I think I and I think that's just that's sort of off the top of my Ron head. Ron Breaker in a year. Yeah. Woo, yeah. Yeah, that's good. No, I, I think that uh if uh so apparently Andrew Zarian has said that they don't know what they're gonna do with that title situation. Yeah. And I think it's the kind of thing, man, where I don't I don't want to be too much of a devil's advocate here, but that's just the way WWE does things. I know is, I know. you know, they're like, Hey, we'll see how this goes. We'll see how this works. It'll take on challenges from raw and SmackDown. There are any number of people out there that can last at least till SummerSlam. Um, and then we'll just figure it out when we get there. I don't think there's any, I don't think there's any desire or need to split those titles up just yet. Um, and if they get There's potential for decent stories being told there, so yeah, pursue it. Yeah, and if uh, if he gets to that point, um, if they get to that point with him, then mm-hmm. they'll they'll just figure it out, and it'll make for a big moment. But I don't know. I'm look. Would I would I appreciate a little bit more of like a plan in place? Sure. Oh, absolutely. But like, That's I don't know. Do things in AEW. Sometimes I get. Sometimes AEW can be too predictable because obviously they do have plans in place. Like we called yeah. Thunder Rosa beating Britt Baker a year before it happened. Mm-hmm. You know, I was like, oh yeah, Britt's going to have the title and Thunder Rosa's going to take it off her. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, the same thing with, uh, I don't know, with the same thing oh, with Hangman their, too. The same entire, thing Hangman. the yeah. entire AEW world title run, AEW does things different. They have a distinct plan and they rely more on their storytelling along the way. Yeah. And yeah. I wish that WWE can incorporate a little bit more of that. That'd be nice. And that AEW could make things feel a bit more spontaneous from time to time. Yeah, I think there, there could be a good uh, medium there, but it is what Middle it is. ground. Uh, White Brownie, when Kenny returns, should he go after the AEW title? Would you like him to see? Would you like to see him go for the TNT title and make that a workhorse title as well? I personally think Kenny is above titles at this point, so I think he'll Kenny, feud with Adam Cole probably. He'll, yeah, he needs to. He should feud with Adam Cole. He's just there's a ton of people there that he okay. can just feud with. You know, they don't ne- yeah. they don't need them. I mean, that's one thing about AEW as well is that they can take very simplistic things and turn really awesome feuds out of make really awesome feuds out of them. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, I don't think he should go after any title. Mm-hmm. Uh, assemble. How do you see the title unification storyline going for both Roman and the tag titles? Will it be a year of unified titles end of the brand split? Or will this be a three month storyline until they figure out Roman's next big story beat? Thanks, friendos. So, given that we're pretty certain they don't even know, they let's go know. ahead and absolutely with with you know, let's predict something that hasn't even been decided yet. Which is honestly how we do have our pay per views with WWE. Mm-hmm. They don't mm-hmm. decide that stuff until day of. Mm-hmm. You know, what'd be interesting is if the Usos challenge RK Bro to unify the tag titles, and RK Bro is like, "Yeah, you can do that," but obviously you got to put up the SmackDown ones. Then RK Bro wins. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
That'd be something else for a stretch. And then eventually you can have the Usos get the belts back. But, you know, I feel like the Usos quest to unify the tag titles, if it's actually going to be completed, can't be easy. Mm, yeah. You know what they could totally do? What if they what if they merged? Because I don't think Riddle's there yet. But what if they like what if Randy somehow said, hey, put your titles up. The only way we're going to put these titles up is if a you put your titles up. But B, I want a shot against Roman also. Yeah. Like what if they wrapped all that story? RK bro, the hottest thing right now, really on Raw, mm -hmm. maybe even in WWE, the Uso and the bloodline, the biggest story they have. They yeah. wrapped all that up into one big story that they told over a period of months where Randy Orton eventually um, has a match against Roman Reigns and probably mm -hmm. gets smashed <laughs> and, yeah. and pinned. But, you know, they, they could use that, too, to, to further the, the Orton Riddle story, even make that the, the ground for their eventual breakup. You know? I know, yeah. You could do, a, something you you could do, do a lot. And then spring Riddle off from that. Maybe he wins a rumble and, and he challenges Roman. I think I don't think there's any one person right now they're looking at like, oh, this is going to be the guy. I think they have a couple mm -hmm. people that they're probably like, oh, this could be the guy. This could be the guy. Um, and I don't know, maybe in a year, maybe after if if they get their dream match with the Rock That's versus a Roman. If. That's it's a, a big if. if. Who? Let me ask you this. Here, Steve has a question. MF Steve. Yes, Steve. If they don't get Rock for Mania, what are they going to do? Goldberg? Oh, don't. That'd be horrible. I mean, Stone Cold Steve Austin. What they got to do is in the next year is build up somebody to be the guy to maybe beat Roman. Mm -hmm. And so if the Rock match doesn't happen, then at least you got that. Yeah. Yeah. The other day I was like, oh, they should do Cena. Oh, they already did Cena. They did that. <laughs> they, they did, did. SummerSlam, man. That felt kind of underwhelming, didn't it? Sid. Bring Sid in to face Roman. Oh, here we go. Hanson says Veer. Perfect. Grayson, voila. There you go. Uh, JC Ramirez asks, where's Miro? It's been since Full Gear 2021. And as of now, he's in Brooklyn filming an unnamed pilot. So when will he return? Perhaps he takes the TNT title from Scorpio Sky or when a baby face becomes champ. Uh, I want to say it was Fightful reported that he signed a new deal. So mm -hmm. he's staying AEW. It's like four more years or something like that. Yeah. So time. I think he had a hamstring injury, which took him out of action. Now, obviously, he's doing some some acting. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm guessing when he's done shooting this pilot and they have something for him to do, he'll come back. Yeah. It'd be awesome. I missed the Redeemer. You know, it would be terrific if they can't get the Rock for Mania is you do Cody. You have Cody win the Rumble. You, they, they could really have something with Cody. They it could, could it could fall apart, but they could really have something with Cody. It could be Cody could be the guy that beats Roman. Yeah, yeah, it's possible. Uh, let's see here. Uh, DKC says, "What famous Vince McMahon moment would you like to see Tony Khan recreate in AEW?" Oh, that's easy. Okay, he even brings it. A DKC brings it up here. It's blowing out the quads. Oh yeah. Um, I would do the oh, hospital. It's the, it's the it's the pile driver video. Oh yeah, that's good. That's good. He's dancing. Yeah, that one. Yeah, that that's probably the best answer. I'm gonna go with Stone Cold and him in the hospital. That'd be good. That'd be good. That'd be good. I want I want Tony Khan on my screen more, man. Coming out uh, there talking about bots. <laughs> nine days. Nine days. We're gonna find out who paid for the bots. What if that tweet is just a story angle? That'd be pretty crazy. And there's like, so he's like, man, it's like, I don't know, some sort of invasion, fake invasion thing that he's doing. It, it turns out it's New Japan paying for the bots to get back them for for killing their U.S. expansion. That'd be amazing. That would be something else. Uh, NJWP book a version of Raw Underground with Blackpool Combat Club in charge. That would actually be pretty cool. You know, like in, in the Nick where they had that underground wrestling thing? Yeah, yeah. That guy's hard to set up like that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I like that. That's good. That'd be uh, good. Brandon says, other than, other than the New Day, what group of wrestlers would you most like to see perform? Miss B. Hey, Van. Um, uh, Undisputed Elite. Oh, that's good. I'm going to go with the old, the old uh, crew of the OC. AJ right, Styles good. and Gals and Anderson. Good. I'll say uh, Lij. Oh no, my it'd be the core control your narrative guys. Oh gosh, 
control your. I want to see. I want to see. I want to see ticking time bomb. Oh god. I want to see Naito. Oh oh man. And, and oh, Sonata. And Shingo. And Shingo. <laughs> That's what I want to see. Yeah, L.I.J. would be good. Oh, House of Torture. <laughs> Gosh. That's it, man. House of Torture, Dick Togo. That'd be awesome. Uh, uh, J-Man says, I was listening to Busted Open yesterday, and Mark Henry said Blackpool Combat Club could be the next NWO. Do you think that could actually happen? I don't think they can. Sure, they have the badass factor. They don't have the cool factor the NWO had. They need a better logo. They need a better logo. The NWO is so it, it was so like they just took sort of like dormant wrestling promotion in WCW and just like turned it upside down. Yeah, I mean they kind of for to a degree dropped the facade of pro wrestling. It felt like more so with Hall and Nash and Hogan because Hogan is just Hogan. Yeah, just that, that facade is like permanent. Yeah. Um, uh, with Hall and Nash, it just felt like they were being Hall and Nash. Mm-hmm, yeah, right. They weren't being characters. You yeah. know. Yeah. Which is such an outlier for the day. Yeah. Now, I mean, I don't know. I think they could be something cool. Like if their if their whole goal is to change AEW, and like you know, AEW management Tony Khan is like, no, I like the way I'm doing things here. You could tell us. You could tell a cool story there. Totally. Totally. You know. Totally. Uh, Ooh, I like this idea. Heart the Dutchie says, "How would you feel about the concept of an AEW Lights Out Championship?" Oh, that'd be cool. That's a cool idea. That would be very cool. Yeah, like the tubs to the tough. Yeah, that could be neat. That could be neat. That could be the 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 Blackpool Clobbering Club title right there. Uh, mm. Let's see here. Uh, oh, okay. Claudio Gaetan says, using the current roster, I'm assuming it means for WWE, could you predict who you think are in line for their respective top titles a year from now? Um, who's in line next for the U.S. WWE U.S. title? A year from now, though. A year from now. Who's in line for the U.S. title? Well, he sort of says, but he says, who, who do you think are next in line a year from now? Okay, so let's just go with a year from now. Who's going to have the, US, the WWE title a year from now? Oh, probably still Roman. Oh, probably. I'm sorry. The U, I, I said that I meant the U.S. title. Oh. Because um, Finn's got it now. Austin Theory is probably going to have it pretty soon. He'll probably drop it though. I mean, the way they booked the mid card titles, it's 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 like really. Let's just do this. Let's just take the first part, skip the second part. Who's going to get the U.S. title next? It's going to be Austin Theory, right? It's going to be Austin Theory. It's yeah. going to be Austin Theory. Intercontinental Championship. Is it going to be Jinder Mahal? Mm-mm. Should be Sami Zayn. Because mm-hmm. that guy just killed it at WrestleMania. Yeah, he did. Yeah, it'd be cool to see Sammy get that belt back. That Although I want to, I want to see Ricochet have a, a a good, lengthy run with it. See what he could do. That'd be nice. Who's gonna be he's the next? A, he's a spectacular wrestler, and you know, like it's a bummer that he won the belt and then defended it against Sammy and then lost three matches in a row. I mean, he beat Los Lotharios. Yeah, it was terrible himself, and it was a really fun match. But you know, give him more wins, fewer losses. Yeah, the top titles are kind of hard to like Roman. We already talked about that. I don't know who's gonna be. Yeah. Done. Uh, let's see here. Who's going to be the next women's tag champions? Um, Bailey should find a partner. They should do challenge. the thing. I saw this the other day because I wasn't watching at the time. Cody is the only guy in history to win and lose the, the, his, the tag team titles, his tag team title. In the same match. It was oh, wow. him. He was champion with somebody. I forget who. Maybe it was DiBiase or he won it with DiBiase. Mm-hmm. And his tag partner came out with him. And then the, their opponent was supposed to have a mystery partner. He ended up being the mystery partner. And then he beat whoever his current partner was as tag oh, wow. champion. Hardcore Holly. He was, thank you. Hardcore Holly. And then he was the mystery partner with DiBiase, I guess. Oh, wow. And then he beat... And then he, he lost, but he won him. Yeah. That's something else. Pretty cool. Huh? They should do that, that is- with uh, Sasha and Bailey. Yeah. That'd be cool. Yeah. Uh, Will Combs, power rank each of your top five all-time favorite wrestling themes. Oh, man. I think this is kind of easy. Uh, I'm going to go with all-time. I'm going to go with uh, Shawn Michaels. Okay. Uh, Triple H, my time. Ooh, good one. 
Um, the Brood. Oh, great. Uh, we got two left. Uh, I'm going to cheat a little bit and do six. I'm going to put the NWO and DX's theme in one spot tied. Okay. And then I feel like I'm forgetting an obvious one, though. Hmm. So here's mine. Well, you think yours. Number one is uh, uh, Stone Cold's Disturbed theme. Number two is uh, Jericho's Break the Walls. Number three is the NWO. Uh, number four is uh, Baron Corbin's theme, the good, the good one, not the current one or the or the King of the Ring mix mix up, but uh, that one. Uh, and then number five is going to be uh, Oscar's theme. Yeah, I just thought Oscar's theme. That's gonna be a five on my list too. Oscar's, Oscar's amazing. theme is fantastic. I will give Absolutely like fantastic. yeah, I'll give a special shout out to DX, and I'll give a special shout out to Alistair Black's NXT theme. Mm-hmm. Terrific, terrific. Yeah, it was really good. Yeah, yeah, but my good. time is phenomenal as well. Uh, let's see here. Oh wow, we'll end on this one. Blue. Says, how do you decide whether a fast food item is risk is worth risking your health over? Is there anything you know is probably not good for you to eat that you'll eat anyway, or be willing to eat? So my philosophy is, if I've had a good run of eating healthy and exercising, I'm fine to eat whatever. Like I'll go to five because Five Guys is like Five Guys is like way over adult like that that shit is like you get like a double cheeseburger from five guys oh my god yeah you can yeah, feel it corrupting your body it's like 2500 calories yeah it's it's insane yeah yeah so i'll like if i'm like oh man i've been exercising a lot i've been eating good a lot i'm willing to i'll indulge yeah i'll do that um there's a certain novelty factor i don't eat a lot of fast food yeah right but there's a, if there if there's a new product that has a certain novelty to it. That sounds like it could be an interesting experience. I'll give it a try. Mm-hmm. You know, I, since I don't eat a lot of fast food. Yeah. If I want to, if I want to indulge here or there, I don't mind it. Mm-hmm. I just don't go crazy with it. But yeah, you know, that that's kind of the, the major thing. Obviously I'm not a huge cheese person. So if there's a product that's just utterly bathed in cheese, it's not going to be for me. Yeah. Um, but that's kind of the major thing. It's like, Oh, that sounds like an interesting combination yeah. of foods. I'll I generally I'll do like things I'll either I, I, I sort of use those for events kind of also mm-hmm. like, you know, it's like, oh, man, there's a new episode of, I don't know, Star Trek or something on. But let me, you know, I'll get some. I've been good. I'll, I'll do that. Or like last Friday, you know, it was our last uh, uh, live watch long yeah. night. I was like, yeah. you know what? I'm at Winco. I'm going to get myself a Winco pizza. There you go. Oh, man, I was stuffed. Great. Yeah, great. It was great. Anyways, that's going to do it for us, everybody. Our, uh, Ulysses was in town. We went to Beach Hut. I had some Marley nachos. Oh, yeah. You love those things. I love those things. That's going to do it for us, everybody. Thanks so much for tuning in. We appreciate it. Uh, tonight, the Enforcer and I are back for some My GM Ooh. mode on uh, WWE 2K22. Uh, so join me there at twitch.tv forward slash MFSteve. Here there is a brand new Numbers Don't Lie survey available right now. You can, uh, it's open for channel members and it's open, uh, over here at the Twitch. If you catch a live show and also for patrons, all patrons, and we're revisiting this week, Brett Hitman Hart. Uh, we're going to see, see if his numbers go up after time to reflect and see if oh, our, yeah. if our thoughts on Brett have, have changed at all or gotten, but I feel like he's a little low. I just I kind of want to look at it again. See what, yeah, where he's wrong with that. Yeah, nothing absolutely. Anyways, thanks everybody for tuning in. We appreciate it. Till next time, we'll talk to you. Goodbye.